Welcome to Unleash the Awesome with Dave Gambrill. All of us have unique skills, talents, and abilities that aren't being used to their full potential. Our mission is to share the people, tools, apps, and other resources that will help you unleash your awesome on the world. Yo, what's up? It's Dave. Welcome to another episode of Unleash the Awesome. Today, let's talk about a few of my favorite things, the September 2022 edition. And no, I'm not talking about raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. What I'm talking about is I get asked a lot about recommendations for things, whether it's in my business, my digital marketing business, whether it's on my health and fitness journey, whether it's the podcasts I listen to, the books I listen to, because I tend to listen to them more than read them, but the books I might also be reading, the YouTube channels I binge on, stuff like that. So I figured I'd just do a podcast episode and lay out some of the things that I'm currently using in my business, some of the things I'm geeking out on, and maybe one or more of these things will help you in your mission, your journey to unleash your awesome on the world. So without further ado, let's jump into it. I'm going to start with marketing technology. So these are the things that I'm using in my business and that I recommend other people check out and use in their business, especially if you're a speaker, a trainer, a coach, consultant, you want to monetize your message online, you want to figure out how to create assets online that work for you 24-7, 365. These things will definitely help. The first one is Kajabi. Kajabi is the all-in-one solution that I use for my course hosting, my memberships mostly, my email marketing, my opt-in pages, it handles my shopping cart, all kinds of other stuff. So again, specifically, if you want to create courses and you want to create your own content or maybe you're licensed to teach some other content that you can put in courses online, I would highly, highly recommend you check out Kajabi. And I'll make sure the links to all of these things are in the show notes. And you may want to use my links in the show notes, one, because they're affiliate links and it helps me be able to continue to bring things like this to you uh, at no cost. And two, oftentimes because of the affiliate or partner relationships I have with some of these companies, you usually get a better deal. So if you use my link for Kajabi in the show notes, you'll get a 30-day trial instead of just a 14-day trial. So highly recommend you go check that out. It also comes with a ton of support resources and courses and other things that will help you get started quickly. And uh, I've been using this for over 10 years now, maybe closer to 12 years. I can't even remember, uh, but it powers like 90% of my business. The second tool I'd have you look at is ClickFunnels. So it, again, if you want to get more intricate with your sales page, you want to do upsells and cross-sells and order bumps, which Kajabi will let you do, but ClickFunnels is a little more elegant in that regard. And maybe if you want to do a like free, a free plus shipping um, book order type um, deal, like a book funnel, or you have physical products you want to sell, e-commerce stuff, ClickFunnels is a really great option for you. And they have a great platform as it is, but they have a newer version that's coming out in October that you do not want to miss. I've been playing around with it as ClickFunnels 2.0. It's really, really awesome. So if you want to go ahead and get a trial to that, again, my link is in the show notes for you. I'm actually going uh, in a couple days to their event, their conference that they do, Funnel Hacking Live. It's an amazing marketing event. If you've never gone, I highly recommend you go to the next one. And I think, I think... I don't think this is out on the street yet, but I think next year's will also be in Orlando. I think at the same venue, the Orlando World Center Marriott. Um, you may want to double check that, but little inside sources uh, kind of drop that hint that I think they'll be back there next year. But anyway, look up Funnel Hacking Live. It's a great event. Like this year's lineup is amazing. Besides Russell Brunson, there's Marie Forleo and Marcus Lemonis and Brandon Burchard and Jenna Kutcher and a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of amazing people that are not only good with the marketing, but they're also good with the mindset. The next thing I'd have you look at is a artificial intelligence tool. Artificial intelligence is permeating the digital marketing space. There's so many things now that you can use for growing your business online and not having to know a lot about this stuff. A lot of it's either drag and drop or like this, artificial intelligence. It's called Jasper, and it does copywriting for you. It's brand new copywriting. It's not scraping other copy from places online. What it did was it read like 10, 20% of the internet not too long ago, and you give it requests, and then it writes copy for you. It's really amazing. And it has some templates in there specifically for marketing the PAS or Problem Agitate Solve copywriting um, framework, as well as ADA, Awareness, Interest, Desire, Action. You basically just put in your company, kind of what your company does, and it writes some really, really good stuff for you, whether it's video sales letters, YouTube scripts, 
copy for your sales page. And now they added this thing called Jasper Art where it can create images for you as well. So you don't have to go buy stock images anymore. You can create images based on the blog post or whatever it is you're creating. They have a new template too called uh, like one shot blog post or something like that. And you basically put in what you wanted to write a blog post on and it writes the whole thing for you and it's really good. Listen, I was skeptical when they first shared this with me about a year ago. I was like, come on, how good can this be? Like, no. And I really pushed them off. I, it's a term he's called giving them the Heisman, if you know what the Heisman Trophy pose looks like. Um, you know, it's like holding them at an arm's length, kind of giving them a stiff arm saying, nah, I don't think so, I don't think so. And the, um, Austin, thankfully, Austin Distel uh, was reaching out to me and he kept, he was very persistent. And he finally said, like, no, just try it. Come on, try it. And I said, look, I can't promote anything or talk about something I don't believe in. They said, no, 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 come on, take a look at it. And I did, and my mind was blown. And it continues to be blown. Like, I got it in the early beta, and then I got access to this Jasper Art thing in early beta. And I was like, wait, what? This thing is insane. So if you haven't checked it out, go check it out. Again, it's called Jasper. If you use my link in the show notes, I think they give you like a 10,000 word credits or something like that. I don't know if you can get trial to the Jasper Art thing. It's an add-on but it's so worth it as, as right now, as I'm doing this episode, it's like 20 bucks for unlimited outputs. I mean, you can create some really, really amazing content. If you haven't seen some of the stuff I posted on Instagram in the last couple of weeks, go check it out. Cause I put some of the art, some of the examples on there. It's, it's really good. All right. The next one is convert kit. So if you're not going to use Kajabi because Kajabi does have uh, email marketing built in, you just need a good email service provider. I would recommend you check out either convert kit or active campaign active campaign. Both of them are good. They're good to get started. You can get started either free or very low cost. They're very reputable and they will help you get started. And they have lots of resources to get you going. A lot of content creators and stuff use those too. So convert kit or active campaign. Uh, Repurpose.io is a site that will do what it says. It repurposes your content. So if you've been following me for any period of time, you've heard me say you need to create content on a consistent basis, right? Get it out there. And what this does, I actually use repurpose for this very podcast. It will repurpose your content. You set up workflows and it automatically in the background will repurpose your content. So for me, I tend to do this podcast mostly in an audio only format, but I have a repurpose workflow set up that will automatically create, it's called an audiogram and it uploads it to YouTube. So it's just an audiogram of just the audio of me on YouTube, but some people prefer to get their information via YouTube instead of a podcast player. And so it puts it out on YouTube automatically for me. It takes the show notes that I already load into my thing that I use, which is called Simplecast for my podcast. And it takes the show notes and everything and just puts them right over in YouTube and puts a video essentially of the audiogram on YouTube. It's amazing. It can do all kinds of other stuff with Instagram and like blog posts and all kinds of other stuff. Go check it out. Um, again, link will be in the show notes for you or wherever you happen to be watching this. Maybe you're listening to this or watching this on YouTube right now. If you check the description below, the info will be there. And the last one I want to talk about is Searchy. So if you're creating a lot of video content uh, and specifically if you want to do memberships, Searchy, my friend Stu McLaren, uh, he's the membership guru. He knows all about how to create really powerful memberships, recurring revenue, subscription type things online. And what they did with Searchy, uh, this is, he's one of the co-founders of it, him and uh, Andrew. Searchy allows you to search with inside video content that you create. So it creates a really good user experience for your customers and your clients and your students, because let's say you do a 90 minute Zoom call Q and A with your audience or something, and people don't wanna watch the whole recording, they just wanna get their question answered or they wanna be able to jump to a specific part. It, because it creates a transcript in the background and then loads it into the video, you can search the video and go directly to that part of the video and then just watch what you want to watch. So a lot of times if I'm doing a Q&A and somebody asked a question but they're not live on the Q&A, they're going to listen to the replay, I'll say something like, Peter Jones wants to know, and then I'll answer the question. And that way I'll say, say, just search for your name. And when you search for your name, you'll find it. Maybe I talked about a couple different Peters in the conversation, but they'll see it in the list and then they can go right to it and get it answered. So if you do group coaching or any kind of memberships, things like that, Searchy is amazing. You should check that out. It's really, really awesome. Okay, let's jump into fitness. Yeah, I've been on my own little fitness journey in the last couple of years. I let things get away from me for the last how many knows, how many years and COVID and all that stuff sitting at home 
eating too much pizza and drinking wine and stuff didn't do me any favors either. So I decided I need to make a change. So I've really been on this fitness push probably for about the last year or so. And so I've been using a lot of tools and people have noticed and people have asked me whether they see me in person or see me online. They're like, hey, what are you doing? You know, what are your tricks? And honestly, there are no tricks to this. It's calories, right? It's creating a calorie deficit, but you have to pay attention to the kind of calories you're consuming, get nutrient dense foods and how do you track all that stuff. So there are some tools and supplements and stuff I've been using and some resources. So I thought I'd share them with you because I get this question a lot. The first one is my fitness pal. It's an app on your phone. It allows you to track what you're eating. And I found just by tracking what I'm eating, I eat differently. I eat better because if I have to log in there that I just ate a chili dog from Sonic or something, which I don't know the last time I had a chili dog at Sonic. That actually sounds disgusting. But if I had to like put that in there, there's it's like a reckoning with myself of like, ugh. And it has a database of a lot of those foods. It probably has that food in there. And it'll say, you know, like 600 calories and 48 grams of fat and whatever. And you're like, ugh, and however grams of carbs. So you can track your macros and all that stuff. It's really cool. And I think if you pay for it, which I did, I, I don't know how much it is per year. I don't know, like 60 bucks, 70 bucks, something like that. Um, you can use a barcode scanner. So if you're using like some protein drinks or things like that, and you want to just scan the UPC code, it'll do that and then pulls it up for you. It does the same thing with some supplements. So it's really good. It's a nice way to track what's going on. You can also have all of your fitness apps and stuff uh, integrate with it. So if you're trying to keep up with the calories that you're burning and you want to make sure that you eat the difference, in some cases, maybe you want to do that depending on if you're trying to put on muscle or do body recomposition or whatever, it's, it's a pretty good app. And most of the fitness professionals that I've come across in my own little journey, they mention this app a lot. So it's called My Fitness Pal. Highly recommend you check that out. Uh, the other tool that's been really instrumental in what I'm doing, which is trying to lose body fat, not trying, I am losing body fat, is Peloton. We have a Peloton bike. I got it for my wife years ago at Christmas. She wanted it. She likes to ride outside when the weather's good, but the weather's not good here for probably four months out of the year. She's not going to go out and ride in the snow. And so she got on the bike. But like most things, the bike for a while was just a clothes rack. It was a nice place to stack some clothes and stuff. And so neither of us were riding it a whole lot. And then when I decided to get back in this, I'm like, look, I have this bike. Why don't I just get on it and ride it? So I've been riding it. have been pretty successful. They also have an app that helps you do uh, exercises and stuff that's not on the bike. So if you don't have access to your bike or traveling or whatever, or you want to do some other stuff, their app's really cool. I think if you use my link, you get some kind of deal. If you're going to buy the bike, you get some kind of discount on the shoes that you'll need for the bike or whatever. I don't know, uh, but I go check it out. It's, it's a great tool. We've really liked it. We both got back into it in the last year or so. I've been riding it a ton. And uh, some of my favorites some of my favorite instructors. Sometimes I'll just ride it in this thing. It's called Scenic Ride. And you can just put in how long of a ride you want to do, 20 or 30 minutes. And it has these scenes of like the beach in Hawaii or some town in France or something. So a lot of times I do that and will listen to an audiobook or watch a YouTube video or something. But if I need to get my butt kicked like I did this morning before I got on this podcast and I want to do a, a coached ride, some of my favorite coaches are Kendall Tool. She's really, <laughs> I have a love-hate relationship with her. I, I don't like her a whole lot when I'm doing the ride, but when I'm done and I see the output and a lot of times she helps me break uh, personal records and whatever, then I love her. So, And I, I think with most of your coaches that help you get the most out of yourself, there's probably some kind of relationship like that. But I like Kendall Tool, Jen Sherman's good, Ali Love, and then Matt Wilpers does uh, these power zone rides. And so you can calibrate yourself on the bike and then put yourself in certain zones when you do power zone rides later. So I like to do this ride sometimes. The other thing I've been doing is I decided to get back in the gym. So I've been going to Planet Fitness, pay the 20 bucks a month or whatever for their plan. Uh, the cool thing is my son comes with me uh, or he brings himself at five o'clock in the morning before he goes to school, which is pretty cool. But I've been going in there and I've been following a protocol from this guy named Jeff Cavalier. It's called Athlean X. That's the name of his company, Athlean X, uh, Athlean X with Jeff Cavalier. Uh, and if you see the guy, you'll be like, wow, that guy's pretty fit. If I follow what he's doing, maybe I can be like that. I, I don't have any aspirations to look like exactly like Jeff does. But you can tell that he gets results and he's trained a lot of um, athletes, especially in baseball. So... Uh, he asks you a couple questions on his website, and then he gives you the fitness routine that you want to go through for whatever your goals are. And you can load the the routines or whatever as an app on your phone and just click on there and do them each day. And the cool thing is it's only like six or seven exercises each day, Monday through Friday. And if you can't get access to a gym, you can, there's home swap, so you can do the stuff at home as well. 
and it only takes me like 30, 40 minutes to do the actual lifting part of it, which is cool. So it doesn't take a ton of my day. I usually go to the gym if I'm going to go to the gym and spend maybe an hour there, a little bit warming up on the treadmill, go through the athlete X, whatever routine is for the day. And then I might do some cardio, um, just if I have some spare time at the end, get on the treadmill and just, you know, do target heart rate stuff. So that's pretty good. Um, if I'm doing some of the stuff at home that's like Tabata or Hit, and I need timers, there's an app I use on my phone, and I use an iPhone. I have the whole Apple Apple ecosystem, uh, but I don't upgrade very regularly. I have the iPhone 12, uh, but I use something called the Timer Plus app. I don't know if it's available on Android devices, but Timer Plus gives you some really good uh, timers that you can go through for your exercise. Um, as far as supplements and eating, some of the things that have helped me, uh, Athletic Greens. And no, I don't have an affiliate relationship, although I do have a referral code. I think you get um, five free travel packs and some vitamin D and K drops if you use my referral link. Um, But Athletic Greens has been great because I take it first thing in the morning. As soon as I wake up, it just gets some nutrients on board for me on an empty stomach. It gets me going into my day. Uh, It's not like heavy. You know, it's not like I don't wake up and drink like a protein thing or whatever right away. And I just get some nutrients in me and then I go to the gym and work out and, or get on the Peloton or whatever. It's been a really good nutritional base for me. I know you've probably heard it on a million podcasts or YouTube channels and you're like, is that stuff really that good? For me, my first person experience with it, it's really helped me a ton. I think there's direct results I'm getting in what I'm doing based on having a good nutritional foundation of athletic greens. Now, obviously you need to eat a good diet. It's not a substitute for that, but it's a good add-on. So there's some days when I'm traveling or doing other stuff, it's just hard to meet my macros. I'm just glad I have it on board. It's like nutritional insurance. Um, Also, when it comes to eating, I started doing Factor, Factor 75 or Factor. They send me meals. I get like eight of them a week. They are probably about eight to 10 bucks, depending on the the plan that you do. Uh, I do the keto ones mostly because I'm still in the process of, I want to burn more fat. And I've just found that when I stay in a keto, keto, ketotic, (laughs) ketogenic, when I'm burning ketones, when I'm burning fat for fuel and converting them to ketones, um, I just tend to lose fat faster. So for me, that works really well. So they have keto meals on factor. They also have vegan and high protein and whatever it is you want, they probably have it. So I get a few of them delivered each week because again, like if I'm traveling or doing some other stuff or, you know, running the kids around to school or going to their, you know, working all day and then going to a nighttime event like last night there was the home football game and the marching band and all the jazz you know the temptation would be to just go order some pizza or do takeout or something but if i have the factor meals in the fridge it only takes them two minutes to warm them up in the microwave and they're really nutrient dense and can meet your macros so that's been helpful for me um, it, when it comes to ketones too i don't do a lot of exogenous ketones meaning i don't take ketone supplements a ton but every now and then i want them for certain reasons and i use prove it they have a flavor called raspberry lemonade and you can get them with caffeine or without it's called charged with caffeine so sometimes uh, in the morning late morning i might do some exogenous ketones ketone drink Um, they're not inexpensive but to me they're worth it and they've again helped me on my journey and sometimes when i do the ketones in the afternoon i'll do them without caffeine because i really prioritize my sleep we'll get into that when i get in the podcast section here in a second and uh, I don't want to have caffeine after like two o'clock in the afternoon. So I'll drink one of the uh, little packets without caffeine. And it just gives me some clarity throughout the day. It helps me focus. So that's been been helpful. And then the last little piece here in my fitness has been my Apple Watch. So I've had an Aura ring for a while and I liked it. And it gave me some feedback that the Apple Watch didn't with my sleep and body temperature. But I literally just yesterday got the new Apple Watch 8, which is about the only thing I upgrade fast anymore when Apple comes out with new stuff because the new Apple Watch 8 has temperature sensing in it as well as better sleep feedback. So it's kind of made my Aura Ring redundant in that regard. If you don't have an Apple Watch, Aura Ring's really good. You might want to get that. It gives you a lot of good feedback on your exercise and things like that. But for my Apple Watch, for me, it gives me a lot of good feedback uh, on the calories that I'm burning, the steps that I'm taking, It gives you active calories versus just basal metabolic rate calories. You can track your workouts on there easier. It's got all kinds of stuff, plus all this other stuff I mentioned and measure my sleep and and all that other jazz. So yes, I do wear it when I sleep. Um, But it only takes, people ask this question a lot, well, then when do you charge it? I just charge it when I'm doing doing my morning routine, like jumping in the shower, brushing my teeth or whatever. You know, that takes like, whatever, 15, 20 minutes to get dressed, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I just put it on the charger and it's 
it gets charged pretty quick. It charges really fast now. So that's it for fitness. There's probably other stuff that I do, but those are the main things that jump out at me. All right, let's transition into podcasts. So the podcasts I've been geeking out on, I probably have 50 different podcasts that I listen to on a pretty regular basis, but the ones that I've been listening to a lot lately that you may want to check out, the first one is called The Huberman Lab by Dr. Andrew Huberman. He's a professor at Stanford, super smart guy, as you're probably going to figure out here. I like to listen to people who have a deep science background, but also can give the practical protocols based on the science, right? And I'm talking about good science, peer-reviewed science, not junk garbage science, but like really good science. And I have a science background, so I can appreciate some of the stuff that I'm going to share with you from these podcasts. Maybe for some of you, if you don't have a science background or you don't like science or whatever, some of it might go over your head. But what I like about Huberman, Andrew Huberman, is that he'll share the science side of it. And because he's a professor at Stanford, he will teach you some of it. I'll say, let me give you some of the baseline of why you might want to know the science behind this or the anatomy of physiology or neurochemistry or whatever. But then he gives practical protocols. So he did episodes on sleep and focus and nutrition. And he had Jeff Cavalier on of Athlean to talk about weightlifting and different protocols for that. So they talk about the pros and the cons of the different protocols and what you might want to do. So for me, I've really been prioritizing sleep and there's lots of reasons and science behind that, but he did a whole episode that was like two hours on some of the things you could do for sleep. Like, and, and one of them is kind of counterintuitive for one you probably hadn't thought about, but it has to do with your circadian rhythm and getting natural sunlight in your eyes as early in the day as possible. So I'm not going to, don't stare at the sun, by the way, but you may want to go listen to his podcast if you like that kind of stuff. Tim Ferriss Show, I've always liked Tim and the stuff that he does. His book, The 4-Hour Workweek, totally changed my life. So I listen to his podcast pretty regularly. I don't listen to every episode. It kind of depends on the guest, but uh, you might want to check that out. And I met or was introduced to uh, Huberman and this next one, Dr. Peter Atia and some of the other folks from Tim's podcast. So the next podcast is called The Drive with Dr. Peter Atia. Peter Atia. He's a doctor. This one is... Um, He's an MD doctor. He's very, this is very deep on science and kind of cutting edge biohacking and things like that. So if that's not up your alley, you might not want to listen to it. But again, he brings on a lot of cool guests and talks about things like not only lifespan, but health span, like living, if you want to live long, do you want to long, live healthy, right? You want to, you don't want to be in a debilitative state for the last 10 years of your life or whatever. So he talks about a lot of that stuff and brings on guests in that regard. And he still has active patients. So he talks about some of the things he's doing in his practice as it relates to this stuff. He uses the aura ring with a lot of his patients for tracking or Apple watch and stuff like that. But he talks about his fitness routines, what he's doing. And he's like a super fit dude. He's done Ironmans and all this other crazy stuff that I have no aspiration to do. But he talks about some of that stuff. And then again, we'll give you the practical application of like, okay, so if you're a, a 50 year old male and you want to lose some body weight or you want to improve your cardiovascular fitness or whatever, he gives you some protocols for that. Uh, in the same vein, uh, found my fitness podcast with Dr. Rhonda Patrick. Again, she's super deep on the science. She cites all the articles and the different paragraphs and the, the citations and stuff that she's, the scientific um, papers and stuff, the literature that she's going through. But she's really good. And her podcast doesn't come out as often. I think she might do like every other week, maybe monthly. But she'll go really deep on the science. So again, by the, by the time I listen to Huberman and Dr. Peter, Peter Tia and Rhonda Patrick, whatever, and they tend to overlap on some of the stuff they talk about. And again, they're not in total 100% agreement on everything. But if you kind of use the 80-20 principle, you're like, okay, well, seems like they're all centered on this one thing. So maybe I could focus on that one thing and then modify that protocol to meet my specific situation. And that's what I've done. I've listened to a lot of the stuff. I'm like, they all tend to be talking about this or that or whatever. Why don't I find something that works for me in that category and just stick with it and see what happens. And I'm getting results because of it. So good science based, but also practical. Like they're seeing it with their own patients, seeing it with themselves, seeing with other people that they communicate with in their communities. So really good stuff. And then the last one I'll share today on today's episode, uh, No Stupid Questions, the No Stupid Questions podcast. This is by Stephen Dubner of Freakonomics and Angela Duckworth, who wrote the book Grit. And what they do is they answer questions. Uh, I mean, that's why it's called No Stupid, Stupid Questions. But it's really good around sociological and psychological stuff that happens and like why people react a certain way or why they're doing certain things or just getting into the, the social science aspect of it. And then again, practical takeaway. So like if you tend to have this happen, what could you do to prevent it? Or what could you do to do more of it if that's what you want? 
and they have a good give and take on a lot of really good like hot button issues. And I love to listen to that because it challenges my thinking. It gets me to think about things differently or maybe think about things in a way that I never considered. All right, let's switch to books, audiobooks mostly, because I tend to listen a lot on Audible. If you don't have Audible, you should go check it out. Again, my affiliate link will be in the show notes. I think you get some free books or something for a month. I don't know what their current deal is, but the one audiobook that is on my phone all the time, I never, like, the cool thing is when you get a book from Audible, you can have it be in your Audible library, but it doesn't necessarily need to be downloaded on your phone. So I literally have hundreds of books. I don't have them all on my phone. I could click a button and get them there at a moment's notice if I want. But the only one that stays on my phone 100% of the time is the Ultimate Jim Rohn Library. Jim Rohn, R-O-H-N. Jim is the, I guess, the, the, the founder of a lot of the stuff that Tony Robbins talks about. Tony Robbins worked for Jim for years, and so a lot of the stuff you hear him mention, and he cites Jim a lot in his conversations and his teachings. Um, but the stuff from Jim, he, these are just timeless, classic, motivational, inspirational, tactical, and practical things for how to be successful. And some of them you can actually hear them writing on a chalkboard. So it tells you how old they are. But they're great. And I listen to a little bit of it almost every day. Probably 320 or so days out of the year, I listen to at least 5 or 10 minutes of Jim Rohn. So that one's always on there. Uh, I just listened to Courage is Calling by Ryan Holiday. It's really good. I like Ryan's stuff. He does a lot of stuff around stoicism and just how to be successful in spite of all of the distractions that are going on in the world. And he's got a new one coming out soon. It's called Discipline is Destiny. And I actually ordered five autographed copies of it that'll be coming soon. Uh, I think it releases officially maybe September 27th, but I'm looking forward to getting that one. Ryan's stuff is really good. He's written um, Ego is the Enemy and The Obstacle is the Way. And they're, they're good. He does a lot of research in his writing, but they're easy to read and very practical. So if you haven't checked out his stuff, you may want to do that. Another one I just finished listening to is called Risk, A User's Guide by General Stanley McChrystal. That one's really good. I tend to take risks a little better or faster or easier than most people because I've been studying this stuff for a while and I like the psychology behind this. So if you struggle with how to look at risk and how to mitigate it or how to leverage it in a way that makes sense for your situation, you might want to check that book out. It's really good. And then from a fiction perspective, which I don't talk about a ton, But for me, I like the thriller, military, CIA, special forces type books. So for fiction, I tend to listen to Mark Graney's uh, Gray Man series, which I think they just did a Netflix. Well, I know they did because I watched it. A Netflix movie, which was a very, very loose adaptation of the books. The books are obviously better, but some of the titles are Relentless, One Minute Out, CR6. It's about this operative CIA, operative special forces guy that you know, goes on all these missions. So sometimes when I want to listen to the fiction stuff, that's what I tend to listen to. All right, last category for today's podcast on a few of my favorite things. I figured I'd give you some of the YouTube things that I might binge, some of the YouTube channels and stuff I pay attention to. And these are going to be way different from the stuff I shared. Most of the stuff I shared so far has been like tactical, practical, you know, things that help you just unleash your awesome on the world, clearly. These are a little more entertaining and kind of out there, but I figured I'd share them anyway because people ask me about it. The first one is Hot Ones with Sean Evans. It's a first we feast um, program. And the premise behind Hot Ones is they interview people while they're eating progressively hotter or spicier chicken wings. (laughs) And it seems like a really dumb premise. But they've brought on, I don't know what season they're in now. There's a lot of seasons of it. Uh, And I think I'm pretty much caught up now, but they bring on some celebrities and some other really successful people. And while I don't care so much about the celebrity thing and I'm not into celebrity worship and things like that, the questions that Sean Evans asks are so good. And you'll see that like 90% of his guests will say to him something like, man, that's a really good question. You're really well researched. What I like about it is he really digs into essentially how these people have been successful And so as they're agonizing over these super hot wings that they're eating, you know, and that literally they're sweating and they feel like they're going to throw up sometimes, like they're very uncomfortable physically. Sean Evans just peppers them with these questions. It keeps going. And so I think you get some answers that you would not get if they went on the nighttime talk show circuit. And because it's a little bit longer format, you get some good stuff. So for me, I like to watch it. One, it's just kind of like a relaxing, almost mindless thing. But two, like I said, Sean really does his research and I get some really good takeaways from it of like how people have been successful or maybe once they've been successful, how they remain successful. Because it's one thing to be successful. It's another thing to maintain that level for a prolonged period of time. 
So again, I've not watched every one because some of the guests didn't really interest me or I don't really kind of agree with their worldview or whatever, which sometimes I'll listen to them just because I want to get a differing perspective. But generally, I lean into the people that I'm either attracted to because of their success or whatever, and I've learned a ton. So it's a really interesting show. I would encourage you to go through a few episodes and, and pick some people that you already know and like and kind of watch those, and I think you will get a lot from it. Another one that's kind of out there is called Hang Time. It's this guy, Michael Turk. He's a punter. He's a fifth-year senior at Oklahoma this year, and he's the punter for the Oklahoma football team. And I don't, again, I don't watch all of his, but he does cool like day in the life videos of a division one college football athlete. And so sometimes he takes you into the weight room or he takes you behind the scenes on game day and their game day preparations and things like that. So one, it's kind of cool for me to just get that view. But two, again, because I've been on this, this health journey this last year or so, it's been interesting to watch like division one athletes, how they're measuring their hydration and how they're like, as soon as they come out of the weight room, they're getting supplements and protein drinks or whatever, based on their own, I don't know if they're doing DNA testing, but they're definitely doing some kind of testing for them because when they come out, they have special smoothies and supplements and stuff that are geared specifically to them. The, the athletic training staff, nutrition staff there, like get some specific things. And then they tell them when they go to eat, like they should be eating a certain way or getting higher protein or whatever. So it's really fascinating to watch that. And I just like college football anyway, so it's neat to see it behind the scenes and um, for a punter. <laughs> so he, he is quite, um, he's quite a character. And um, the girl that is currently dating plays on the softball team. She's super successful. And I think she tried out for Team USA. So you get to see kind of that side of things as well. So kind of like a guilty pleasure thing. But but again, it's like, if you haven't picked up the theme here, like they are unleashing their awesome on the world. Michael's unleashing his awesome on the world. So it's kind of neat to just see another perspective and how people are doing these things. And because I know that success leaves clues, it's just a way for me to watch and study what other people are doing in their own discipline and see if there's anything that they're doing that I can take and use in my own situation. Uh, three more. Uh, one is called Sam the Cooking Guy. I watch him mostly because he makes it easy to cook for everyday people. I wouldn't say that I have any cooking skills at all. I can run a microwave, maybe boil water, maybe make some scrambled eggs. But because of Sam the Cooking Guy, he's given me the confidence, I guess, and the skills to be able to create some really cool things. Um, and he likes to grill a lot, and so I do a lot of stuff with his grilling. But he'll also take some like fast food things or famous restaurant dishes and like remake them and show you how easy they are to make at home. And so I've taken a lot of his stuff and put it into my own nutrition that I've been doing, you know, at this trying to eat healthier and trying to not eat out. He's shown me how to make something at home relatively quickly that's way healthier, but tastes good um, versus me going and getting something at a restaurant. In that same vein, there's this other guy's name is Ethan Chobowski. Ethan Chobowski. Again, I'll put the links in the show notes for you. I don't know if his thing has a title, his show, his YouTube channel, but he is more into, he's kind of like Sam the Cooking Guy, except he's more into the food science. So he'll take a steak and say, look, I'm going to cook it three different ways and I'm going to measure it, the temperature, and show you why you might want to take it off at this time versus this time and all this other stuff. But he really gets into the food science, kind of like Alton Brown, if any of you are familiar with him. He does like heavy on the food science side, but... Again, what I like about it is tactical and practical. So he's like, here's how you can take some of the food science stuff that we know, adapt it for your situation, and make a good meal at home for you know, 20 or 30 bucks, and it's only going to take you 20 or 30 minutes or whatever, and boom, you can have something that's as tasty as a restaurant, but it's better for you, and you'll have leftovers that you can eat tomorrow for lunch or whatever. So that's another one. And then the last one, which is kind of a guilty pleasure, but again, I, I love the fact that these two are successful and have been content creators and are out there getting it done. It's a YouTube channel called Kara and Nate. And they decided five or six years ago that they were gonna travel the world and they were out there using their um, hotel and credit card points to get you know, first class upgrades and all these great experiences. And then through COVID when travel being kind of slowed down, they ended up buying a van, a Sprinter van and outfitted that and traveled most of the United States. I think they went to like 40 states or something. And so I was watching them. That's when I caught on to their journey. And it was kind of neat watching them do all that stuff. And now they're back to traveling the world again. And they go to some really cool places. So for me, again, I like to watch the tactical and practical of like how they're using their 
travel points or their American Express reward points or whatever to get upgrades and create experiences because that's what I'm about at this stage of my life. I don't need more things. I like cool experiences. So I watch how they do that. And then um, they're also really great content creators and are making a living, a really good living of traveling the world. And so they've figured out how to monetize that. So there's a lot of things I learned from how they're doing that and how they're getting it done. And then they've released an app and now they have like a daily email series that comes out, all kinds of amazing things. So again, it's called Carrot and Nate. If you're into that stuff, you may want to check it out. And because of them and their travel around the United States, I got some access to like events and things that I didn't even know were a thing. Like they went on this bicycle tour called Ragbri, which I forget how many hundreds of miles it is, but it's a lot. And they were, you know, going through this whole thing. And it was just kind of neat to see that festival and watch them do this stuff. And then since then, they've got on bikes and rode them through Italy and done some other stuff. And so a lot of it is like, oh, cool. Like, I, you know, I don't want to do all the stuff that they do, but they do some stuff and I go like, wow, that looks really cool and would never have thought to do that. But because they share, you know, how they did it and what the price is and kind of what their expectations were going in and then what they really thought afterwards, there's some things that I thought I wanted to do. And now based on some of their feedback, I'm like, I don't know if I want to do that. And then there's some other things I'm like, man, I never thought of doing that, but that looks really cool. I might want to do it. So I've added some of that stuff to my list. So again, they're called Kara and Nate. All right, so that's it for this episode of Unleash the Awesome. Hopefully this stuff has been helpful. I mean, I get these questions a lot. I figured if I could just answer it all in one spot and then refer people back to it and say, hey, listen, go listen to that episode. I talked about it and go listen to the part where I talked about podcasts or whatever. And I guess what my goal will be, this is the first time I've done this, but I can foresee doing this every year or maybe twice a year. You know, the few of my favorite things, spring edition or something or fall edition, I don't know. But maybe I'll update it, you know, based on the feedback I get. So if you like this stuff, let me know. Go check me out on Instagram. That's where I can respond to you probably the easiest and fastest, the best way. And you can see some of the other stuff I share. Like I share this stuff I come across kind of in a more real-time way over there. So, you know, some of the other fitness stuff I've shared and talked about are like my morning smoothie, the ingredients that I use, or sometimes when I have oatmeal in the morning, like what I put in it. And people want to know that stuff or they want to know just a, a quicker way to maybe do some of the technology things or whatever. So in my Instagram stories and in my feed and my reels and whatever, I talk about some of this stuff and some of the tech stuff. So if you want this on a more consistent basis, kind of as a Dan the Life stuff, make sure you check out my Instagram uh, because I do that stuff every day. So again, I hope this has served you. I hope all the stuff that I share with you, hopefully you've taken away a few of them that you can adopt and utilize in your own situation. So it will help you unleash your awesome on the world. See ya. Thanks for listening to Unleash the Awesome. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review wherever you listen to your podcasts. And please share us on your favorite social media platforms using hashtag Unleash Awesome.